first of all, I think it's good we are talking about it. As humanity, the way we solve things is by getting concerned about them. So if you take climate change as a framework, we all started getting worried about it, and that's why we have spent a lot of time working together, creating things like the Paris Agreement, and then working on solving it. I think about things like AI the same way. AI is probably the most important thing humanity has ever worked on. Now, I think of it as something more profound than electricity or fire. And anytime you work with technology, you need to learn to harness the benefits and while minimizing the downsides. You know, stepping back, when you think about you know, a lot of problems in the world, today it's because we typically have a constraint on resources. AI, for the first time, I think, over time, offers a different construct. Things which are constrained and look like a zero-sum game today may not be so in the future. Take education, for example. It's really difficult to educate people in a cost-effective way. AI may fundamentally change that equation. It may make it possible for us to have clean, cheap, renewable energy for the future. So I think a lot of things will play out in more positive ways than people think. But the risks are uh, important, and I think the way we solve it is we think ahead, we worry about it, we do things like from, from be upfront, uh, you know, have ethical charters, think about AI safety from day one, be very transparent and open in how we pursue progress there, and figure out global frameworks by which we can engage. Just like Paris Agreement and climate change, you know, using forums like this, I think we bring people together to engage on the hard questions, and I think answers will emerge. But I think it's important to be positive about it, uh, especially in the West. I think, uh, you know, I, I, I still today have a wonder for technology. Growing up, you know, I didn't have a phone for a while, telephone, we waited five years, we got a telephone, it fundamentally changed our life. People came to our home to make phone calls. You know, I, I still remember the joys of technology, and I think that'll be true for AI. So it's important for us to explain that and bring the world along with us. But um, what you describe is, uh, let's say, AI uh, creates uh, or has a common good nature. Mm -hmm. But then you have um, AI plays a very important role in um, surveillance of efforts by governments. It is a key factor also in cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. Um, how how uh, can you avoid that AI at the end leads us not into a totally totalitarian state? Uh, you know, to me, the only way to solve some of these deeper issues is global multilateral frameworks. Uh, so to me, the kind of questions you're asking needs to involve G7, G20 discussions, and you know, countries we have to agree to demilitarize AI, and uh, I think that's, that's a common goal countries should work towards. Uh, you know, there's no, no other way to solve it. Uh, one of the good things about it is AI is kind of an equalizer. Mm -hmm. So I think over time people will realize it's, it's tough to weaponize it because everyone will have the same ability back. And, and I think that gives a framework for us to think about. You know, so you need a global stand down, global uh, you know, consensus not to use it for military purposes. Going to be very hard, but I think, you know, is the kind of framework we all need to work towards, and that's the only way out of it, I think.